My name is Kelsey and I am the coordinator of programs and resources for Physical and Health Education Canada. I'm so happy you could join me today. We'll be working through an activity from the PHE Canada Learning Center and it's under the theme Healthy Bodies. Today we're going to be working on an activity for grades level four to six and it's entitled How to Set and Spot Boundaries. So today we're going to be needing a boundaries card, which I don't have a printer at home. So I wrote my own out as well as a pencil to fill in the card. And the learning outcome for today will be to develop relationship skills by setting personal boundaries and noticing the boundaries of others. I'm really excited to start this today and I'm looking forward to it. In terms of looking for an environment to conduct this activity, I would say just find a comfortable space in your home environment. I chose a chair by a window, so I'm really excited to work through this activity in this space. When you're young, it's oftentimes adults that will help to set limits for the child. However, as you grow older, it's up to you to learn and to set your own boundaries and also learn to respect others and their boundaries. Boundaries are a really important component to developing healthy relationships with family, friends, and other trusted people in your life. Everybody has a different set of boundaries, and you have to keep this in mind when you interact with different people. For example, one person might enjoy getting a hug, while other people don't really enjoy being greeted by hugs. They prefer waves or handshakes. Um, another important component of healthy relationships is also expressing when boundaries have been broken or violated. Today, we are learning that there are four types of boundaries that can be set. There are material boundaries, which refer to belongings, time, support. There are physical boundaries, which refer to touching and personal space. There are mental boundaries, which refer to thoughts, values, opinions, beliefs. And finally, there are emotional boundaries, which refer to separating your feelings from others' feelings. Humans can express boundaries in various different ways. For example, we can express boundaries verbally, such as talking or writing about our feelings, or non-verbally, which include facial expressions, body movement, posture, and eye contact. Now that we have an understanding of what boundaries are, we're gonna kind of explore our understanding and relate it into practice by going through a few scenarios together. The first scenario, we have Amir's friend keeps teasing him about some beliefs that he and his family share. His friend keeps saying that the beliefs are not real and Amir responds by looking away, lowering his head and dropping his shoulders. How does this relate to Amir's boundaries and how else could he respond? As we work through this scenario together, we can identify that beliefs fall under the type of boundary, the mental boundary, referring to as well thoughts, values, opinions, and beliefs. Um, also in this case, Amir was using some body language responses to show that he wasn't interested in what his friend was saying. Um, so perhaps he was a little bit unhappy about it. Maybe his friend's uh, thoughts and opinions hurt his feelings because he holds these beliefs to be true. What do you think are some other answers to this? After you've explored scenario one, we'll move on to scenario two, which reads, the last two times that Wanique's friend had come to her house, she has taken Wanique's favorite sweater and has worn it home without asking. Wanique tells her friends that she does not want her to wear her sweatshirt anymore. How does this relate to Wanique's boundaries and how else could she respond? If we look at the scenario a little bit more closely, a sweatshirt is a belonging, which falls under the type of material boundaries that we were talking about earlier. As we go through the scenario again, we read, Wanique tells her friend that she does not want her to wear her sweatshirt anymore. Maybe some other ways that she could respond to this is to communicate her boundary with her friend, saying that, you know, maybe it makes her feel uncomfortable to share her things before she even said that her friend could wear it. Um, perhaps she could talk about what boundaries that the friend has and they could share that type of connection together about boundaries. Um, so just make sure that you always have connections and talk to friends about the way that, you know, what they're doing is making you feel and vice versa, what you do and how you do things can make them feel. The third scenario in this activity reads, Jamie's uncle insists on Jamie giving them a hug when they come to their house. As Jamie's uncle approaches them to give them a hug, Jamie backs away and their face shows a mix of anger and fear. How does this relate to Jamie's boundaries and how else could they respond? 
In this scenario, it seems that Jamie has some physical boundaries in relation to touching and personal space. Jamie clearly did not want their uncle giving them a hug. So we could tell that by Jamie using nonverbal communication by backing away and showing displeasure in their face. What are some other ways that Jamie could express their discomfort with the potential of their uncle giving them a hug? Now let's work through the fourth and final scenario together. The scenario reads, May has noticed that lately her friend keeps daring her to make an unsafe jump on her skateboard or trying to convince her to cross the road when a car is close. May just shakes her head, knowing that this could be unsafe to do. How does this relate to May's boundaries and how else could she respond? In this scenario, May definitely has a strong opinion about not crossing the road or doing a jump because it's unsafe. These opinions would fall under a mental type of boundary. In this scenario, to show her discomfort for performing either activity, she just shook her head. But what do you think would be some other ways that she could respond to her friend? Now that we were able to work through some scenarios about boundary setting together, it's time for your turn to work on some scenarios through using your My Boundaries activity sheet. On this activity sheet, there's a space for you to write about your material, physical, mental, and emotional boundaries. You will list the boundary that you have chosen to, to work through, and then how you will choose to express the boundary if someone breaks or violates it. One thing to really remember and take away from this activity is that boundaries are personal. And although you may not share the same boundaries as someone else, you always have to remember to respect other people's boundaries. After working through this activity, you should have a pretty good understanding about what boundaries are. So in order to really reinforce what we've learned today, we're going to go through some reflection questions. So the first one I'd like to ask you would be how can you use your personal boundaries to assess if your relationship with friends and family members is a healthy relationship? Hmm, maybe think about that one and discuss with any friends or family members that you may have around. The next reflection question we're going to go through reads, if you feel you have an unhealthy relationship with a friend or a family member, what could you do to express this? And whom could you talk to about how you feel? Think about that one for a little bit. Maybe discuss your answers with some friends or a family member. Thank you so much for working through this activity with me today. If you're looking for more interesting Healthy Bodies activities, or if you'd like to look through any sort of physical education activities, healthy eating activities, or emotional well-being activities that you can do in a home environment or an act school environment, then you can go to phecanada.ca under the PHE Learning Center. Similarly, make sure you check out olympic.ca and go to the Olympic School Program for some awesome resources with some really great Olympians. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a fantastic day.